rather than going for nuclear DNA, where you can have a number of independent sets of DNA, which will give you a much stronger answer. Um, and you can get at smaller time scales by um, looking at the, uh, the differences and similarities in the uh, nuclear DNA low side um, over 20 low side, 30 low side in a number of individuals. And you can break it down by uh, size classes or age classes, looking at juveniles and adults. And what we did in this current study was um, we sampled OPE that were adults and OPE that were juveniles to try to look at this differentiation. So what is a microsatellite? Um, microsatellite is simply a sequence in the nuclear DNA where you get a repeat. Tan in this case, it's a tandem repeat. It's a GA, 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 GA. And this is the locus that I'm going to be presenting to you today. This is the sequence of it. Um, to actually genotype this individual for this microsatellite, what we do is um, we amplify this sequence and then we look at it um, on, a, on a sequencing machine, essentially. But instead of sequencing it, we just measure the size of it on the sequencing machine. So this is the output of that. See, so this allele right here. It's approximately 219 base pairs long, and that one's 232 base pairs long. And that's how we identify the genotype for each individual. One thing before moving on and you've developed microsatellite primers um, is you want to make sure that they're inherited from parents to offspring. So for the human analogy, um, if you have two parents with blonde hair, you want to make sure that the offspring also have blonde hair, maybe not black hair or something like that. So with the OP, what we did was I took some adults, different pairs of adults, I spawned them in the laboratory, and then I genotyped their, their offspring and looked to make sure that the alleles that were showing up in the offspring were alleles that were in the adults, and uh, checked to see that the frequencies were generally within what we would expect based on the uh, genotypes of the parents. As you can see, we had six out of 18 loci fail the Mendelian inheritance test. And in some cases, it was because we had three alleles in individuals. Um, in other cases, it was because the alleles in the juveniles just didn't match the alleles in the adults. And we ended up with 12 loci for the black foot PE that we have to look at right now. Uh, we sampled 100 individuals at each one of these star sites. 50 were adults and 50 were juveniles, and that's for each species. Today, we're going to be talking about the black foot OPE. And on, on Molokai, we're going to compare Leo Point to Halaba Valley. So these are the actual allele frequencies and the uh, populations uh, looking at about 42 individuals for Leo Point, 48 individuals for Halaba Valley, and these are the adults. You can basically see by this graph that there's not a whole lot of differentiation going on in the allele frequencies. When we do, it, when we do a statistical test for a population differentiation, this is a FST statistic that Fritz was talking about that varies from 0 to 1. We get a value of 0 0.06 with a p-value of 0.54, which means that it's not significant. So there's no significant differentiation between these two populations. So this is one locus, one microsatellite locus for Blackfoot OPD, and we found no structure, which maybe would be what we'd expect. But what we're hoping for is that as we add up the, the low side and we get to 12 low side, hopefully when we get microsatellites from some of the other species, of OPE, they'll amplify the black OPE also, and they both 20 loci. Maybe we'll be able to detect some differentiation between these spots, but this is kind of like the small scale differentiation that we have any sort of hope of, of detecting. So current conclusions, um, pretty much this has bolstered the conclusions I've made on mitochondrial DNA, where there's, right now we can say there's no population structure within islands. The only structure we, we detect is between islands. And if you want to be conservative, remember that um, mitochondrial DNA, um, a significant difference in populations indicates hundreds to thousands of years of isolation. Um, so if you want to be conservative, you assume every island is its own little population. Because just because we didn't detect differentiation with the mitochondrial DNA doesn't mean that there's not differentiation there on a relevant time scale of fisheries management. What's next? Well, I showed you one locus. We have 12 loci for the Blackfoot OPD, and we have five additional sites to genotype at 11 additional loci, and uh, that's for adults and juveniles. For the Yellowfoot OPD, we currently have 29 loci that we're working with. The Mendelian inheritance um, PCRs are done. I just need to uh, send them for genotyping. 
and then we'll have that solved and ready to analyze the samples. And for the Coelho OPD, we're currently at the point where uh, we need to still PCR the, the OPD larvae. The, the cross has been done. We have the juveniles, in, or the, we have the larvae in the lab, and uh, it's just waiting to, to get it done. But we're trying to move it along where we have one species data set kind of completely um, one step ahead of all the other ones. So you can see it's kind of a stepwise fashion. Once the black foot OPD is done, then the yellow foot OPD will be next, and the quail egg will be last. So we'll be able to have products that are coming out um, on the black foot OPD while we're still working on the data on the yellow foot And that's it. I'd like to thank you for your time.